Hello, and welcome back to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we're gonna do another Spotlight on Plugins. But before we do that, oh, hello, it's me in person. That's me, Jason, this guy, the guy that's been talking to you for all of these videos. And in fact, I just wanted to let you all know that this video is the 200th video in the Conquering Finale series. How exciting is that? 200. There's over 52 hours of tutorials uh, on the website that's available for you to watch. Um, all of it's free. And I just wanted to come on here in person and uh, say thank you for all the support. Thank you to all my subscribers. And uh, a, a big thanks to all the people that have donated to the site as well. If you're not a subscriber, please go to YouTube, uh, click the subscribe button, or uh, sign up for my mailing list right from the website. And uh, if you want to donate, you can do that on the website as well. Just click this button here that I'm hopefully circling now. And uh, every little bit counts. And hopefully with uh, your continued support, we can make another 200 of these videos. Really excited that this is number 200. Um, so that's all. I just wanted to show my face and, and say that and uh, give everybody a big thanks for their support. And with all that being said, let's take a look at some plugins. We're going to deal with the change to real and default whole rest today. So let's get right into it. All right, so here we are in a much more comfortable screen for me, at least, uh, the finale screen. And uh, so we're going to look at those uh, plugins. And they exist in the Note, Beam, and Rest editing section of the Plugins menu. We're looking at these two guys here, Change to Default Whole Rest and Change to Real Whole Rest. Now, before I even get into this, I guess it's kind of important to make sure that you understand the difference between a default whole rest and a real whole rest. When you open a blank file in Finale, you'll see all of these measures have uh, whole rests in them, or so they appear to have whole rests in them. What these are are actually default whole rests, or more technically, they're bar rests. They're not actually whole rests because a whole rest has four beats. So, but we have these bar rests in 4-4 four, four, just as we do in 3-4. Now, obviously, this is not a four-beat whole rest. It's just a bar rest uh, indicating that this whole bar is blank. In Finale, there's a big difference between a default whole rest and a real whole rest uh, in its functionality. And uh, just to show you how you can even identify them, I'm actually going to go into Speedy Entry. And uh, if you click on any frame, you'll see that the, uh, the, the rest actually goes away. The bar rest goes away. So that's really indicating that these bars are actually totally blank. We can, of course, just add a whole rest by pressing the 7 key and we'll actually get a whole rest. And now you'll see that there's a real whole rest there which you can do things with. You can move it up and down, um, you can hide it, uh, and of course you can delete it and get back to your blank measure which will display the default whole rest again. Uh, we can do this in uh, simple entry as well. We can kind of see this if we go into the measure here. Now if you arrow left and right in blank measures, you'll just go to the beginning of each measure, but when you get to that measure where the real whole rest exists and arrow over one more time, you'll actually be able to highlight that rest. And again, you can do things like hide it or whatever you need to do, um, and then keep arrowing over. And of course, we can always delete it to get back to that default whole rest. So just in identifying it, that's sort of important because again, they look exactly the same. You wouldn't know which is a whole rest and which is a real rest unless you kind of uh, look at it like that. So using the plugins is rather uh, easy. You just select any measure, go to plugins, note beam rest editing. In this case, I know this is a default whole rest, so what I want to change it to is a real whole rest. So I'll choose this one. And it kind of looks like nothing happens, again, because they look exactly the same. But again, if we go into speedy entry, we'll see that there actually is something there now. So we know that that's a real whole rest. Of course, oops. Of course, uh, it works the opposite. If we select a measure that has a real whole rest and choose change to default whole rest, it will do just that. And now we're back to that blank measure bar rest instead of the real whole rest. So the main question is, why would you want to do this? Why would you want a real whole rest versus a default whole rest? The primary reason here is for fermatas. If you look at the score here, I've got this oboe solo starting out this piece, and all the rest of the, the instruments are not playing. And uh, we would usually want to show a fermata over the empty bar here at the end for the other players. However, you can't attach a fermata to a default whole rest. In fact, you can only attach articulations to an entry. So an entry is any note or rest. Since the default whole rest is not technically an entry, you can't attach it. So this is why we would have to create a real whole rest uh, to attach a fermata. Now you just saw me do that with speedy entry, so you may ask, well, why would I have to go into the plugins to choose uh, change to real whole rest and do it this way? Well, it, it's there's two different 
you know, it's two different ways to do it, and that's certainly uh, up to you. Um, however, uh, it's really only easy to do it with speedy entry in 4-4. Four, four. That's because the whole rest happens to have four beats, and the 4-4 four, four time signature also happens to have four beats. You run into some other problems when you have uh, measures with more than four beats, so if I, or more or less than four beats. So if I go into this 3-4 measure here and try to press 7, it will allow me to create a whole rest, but it's always going to give me this warning, which is simply just annoying. You have to choose leave the measure alone and click OK. Uh, yes, I want to leave it alone for real. And um, you, now you'll have a real whole rest there, which you can, uh, again, attach your fermata to. Um, the problem becomes even more apparent when you have measures that are longer than four beats, like this 12-8 measure here. Uh, if I were to try and enter a whole rest now and leave the measure, you'll see that it's going to add the rest of the beats because it doesn't want me to uh, not have a full measure of beats there. You can always change this in the speedy options by choosing to uncheck fill with rest at end of measures, but unchecking this option is dangerous in my opinion because you know later on when you're entering notes you could end up um, you know mistakenly not having enough beats in your measure so uh, I really don't prefer to do that anyway suffice it to say that using the change to real whole rest plugin is a much quicker way to deal with both uh, 3 4 and 12 8 or any other meter besides 4 4 as it were so we can just choose note beam and rest editing change to real whole rest on that measure of 3 4 and it's all good and we can do the same thing here I could have done them together actually change to real whole rest and now we can go ahead and put fermatas on both of those uh, bars if we want all right so again that's the value of that plugin it is really when you're dealing with um, uh, meters other than 4 4 now you do have to be careful once you create situations like this. Again, if you were to take that speedy entry and go into this frame of 3-4 and try and exit, it's going to give you that warning again. You're going to have to say, yes, leave the measure alone. Um, and even worse, in bars that are more than 4 beats, going into 12-8 here, if I do it here and click away, you're going to see that it's going to want to create the rest of the measures, or the rest of the, the beats uh, to fill out the rest of the measure, which just is annoying because then you have to, you know, undo and all that stuff. So, um, you know, there are some cautions uh, that go along with this, but, um, you know, that's that's the value of the, the plugin is really being able to put the whole rest very easily uh, in bars that are not uh, quite in 4.4. Now, of course, we can do this sort of, uh, you know, in, in a large group of measures. So if I were to take this, um, let's do it over here in 3-4, uh, select from the oboe all the way down to the bottom of the score. And again, it will ignore uh, measures that have data in that. So it's not going to put a real whole rest over the last note of the English horn here. It's only going to change the default whole rest to real whole rest. So note beam and rest editing change to real whole rests. And now all of these measures up and down the score have um, real whole rests. Um, now from here we can go with the fermata and uh, you know just add it to each measure. Unfortunately, and this is sort of a function of the way that the articulation tool exists, you can't click drag to add more than one uh, articulation over a rest. It's sort of by design because if you were to do this on other music uh, where you wanted to put like staccatos over the whole passage, you would never want to put a staccato on a rest. So Finale um, kind of gives you this function where you're not able to, uh, actually I could do it right here. So if I do uh, staccatos, you'll see that it will ignore this rest right here, right? So Finale is giving you this ability to ignore the rest when you uh, click drag articulations, which unfortunately has the side effect of not being able to do it in this situation. So you'd kind of have to click them one at a time or you know, simply just copy and paste is another way to do this. Um, or there's a copy and uh, paste vertically. Uh, there's, there's a few other ways to do this, but uh, just be aware that you can't, unfortunately, click drag over rests like that. So one question you may be asking, or, or maybe not, is why not just have real whole rests in the entire score? Well, again, if you're using something other than 4-4, that's going to be a real problem every time you try and enter notes. Um, the other issue is that, let's just set this up here. If I were just on this flute line here, if I were to go in here, note beam rest editing, um, change to real whole rests, uh, you don't notice any difference. Like it looks exactly the same, so why not do it that way? Well, you really don't want to do it like that because now you can't 
con uh, combine measures into multi-measure rests. So real whole rests actually can't be um, uh, combined into multi-measure rests. It's because it, it's Finale considers it actual data within the bar, which it won't allow you to um, create the multi-measure rest that way. So again, this is a, a case where we don't want to do that. Make sure that these are default whole rests. And then in the parts, it's uh, certainly easy to just create a multi-measure rest just like that. Um, so that's, yeah, I, I don't know if anybody was asking that, but uh, that's why you wouldn't want uh, real whole rests everywhere as opposed to default whole rests. I will say that there are some circumstances uh, when you import from other sources, sometimes the XML files will come through and all of the bar rests are actually real whole rests, which is a real problem for this very reason. You can't actually create multi-measure rests. Um, so this would be an occasion where if you got a file like that and all of the bar rests are actual real rests, you could just select all, go into the note beam and rest editing and choose change to default whole rest and it will change every single one of those uh, empty bars uh, back to a default whole rest. So then you can choose your multi-measure rests again. All right, so that's really all there is to it. That's the change to real and default whole rest uh, plugin. It's, you know, there's two little plugins in the Notebeam and rest editing, really easy to use. And, uh, you know, that's why and why you'd want to use it and all of the circumstances surrounding it. There is one thing tangentially related to this that I thought I would mention. There may be an occasion where you would actually never want to see the default whole rest. And this is entirely possible in Finale. Uh, in the staff tool, if you double click any staff to get to the staff attributes, there is this option in the behavior section called display rests in empty measures. If you uncheck that for the flute part here, what you'll see is that now the, all of the default whole rests will disappear. If you have a real whole rest, it will still appear, but any default whole rest will just be uh, a blank measure now. So that's a possibility. Sometimes you want to do this if you want to print this out to let your orchestrator you know, right by hand or something, this is a way to do this. And of course, when we're dealing with staff attributes, we always have the option to do these as staff styles. So you could do this as a staff style for, you know, the first four measures or whatever it is you need to do. And uh, with staff attributes, we always have global staff attributes, which is also a plugin in the scoring and arranging section, which will allow you to make uh, staff attribute changes to multiple staffs all at once. And I cover all of this stuff in the staff tool strategies videos and uh, if you're interested in learning more about that check that out i believe it's video 20-2a we'll look at the behaviors in the staff styles uh, this section over here in 20-2e we'll look at the global staff attributes plugin and 20-3a we'll start to look at staff style so you can learn more about you know this display rest and empty measures uh, doing that in different ways uh, in those videos not completely related to the change real and default whole rest plugin, but it is somewhat tangentially related, so I thought I would mention it here. But uh, yeah, so that's it. That's um, that's the uh, the very simple plugin for uh, changing to default and real whole rests. Uh, I hope this has been helpful. Again, thanks for all the subscribers to getting us to 200 videos. This is awesome. Um, I can't wait to get to the next 200. And uh, any donation you can make will definitely help uh, get me to those those next 200 videos. So I, I hope you've been uh, appreciating all these videos, and particularly these uh, Spotlight on Plugins. I think they've been real helpful to a lot of people. So, uh, so thanks for watching. All right, once again, thanks for watching. My name is Jason. This has been Conquering Finale Spotlight on Plugins, and I will see you soon on the next video.